If you have back pain when lifting, you need to try some tests to determine what triggers your symptoms. With this approach, you'll be able to fit your injury into a movement category to better understand why you have pain. Just because you see a problem like this on MRI doesn't tell you the next steps to take or if that's even the cause of your current symptoms. Here's a real-life example of how to test for load intolerance. Paige is a competitive weightlifter who sustained a back injury while competing at a national competition in 2019. During this jerk, you can see she receives the bar in an off-balance manner. Shortly after, she developed tremendous back pain. I want you to listen in on her responses to some of the loading tests I started with that I first learned from Dr. Stuart McGill. Here, what I want you to do is just hold this down by your side. Okay. From standing right here, you feel anything in your back. I want you to hold it straight out front. Does that make you feel anything in your back? Yes. Okay. And then back down. Now what I want you to do is brace your core, like out in the sides of pushing my fingers, brace your core like I'm about to punch you, and then lift up. Does that change your symptoms? It's not as bad. It's not as bad, so it feels better than this. I want you to come up on your toes, and you're going to smack your heels down as hard as you can. Almost like landing from a plane, I want you to sort of send a shockwave up your spine, so land with a little bit more straight your heels, so you just pop down and try to send a shockwave on your spine. That was a painful yes, sensation. Not like a lot of pain, but definitely. Okay. Do the same thing, but for a triple. So again, nice and strong here, and then fade in. See if that changes the Here's what was happening anatomically with those last two tests. When someone has a disc injury like this model is mimicking right here, you'll see that there's a little bit of instability right there. A disc injury automatically decreases the stiffness that that area, that joint segment has. And when you apply a load to the body, either lifting the weight or doing a quick drop like Paige did, you're gonna see a little micro movement occurring at that particular segment, which was generating pain. Now, when Paige stiffened her core, she was using all the muscles that surround that area to pull the spine into a good position and add a little bit of compression, which then when we reloaded by lifting the weight and doing a quick drop, there was stiffness that added compression and limited those once painful micro movements. So a part of her fix was limiting some of the loads that was triggering her pain and then also instilling proper core stability. We started off with the McGill Big 3, a combination of the modified curl up, side plank, and bird dog all held for 10 seconds. I then used exercises like the offset walk and offset squats with very low load to work on improving stability in a more sport specific manner. When the offset weight bounces around slightly, small muscles deep within the body are activated and increase the body's awareness of spinal position, which enhances core stability. Over time, we eventually progressed to bamboo bar squats, which use a light load but enhance core stability to a much greater degree than a traditional barbell lift. Eventually, as pain decreased, we were able to transition back to lifting with some slower tempo lifts with a squat, and then back to more powerful and dynamic Olympic lifts, as you can see here. They say that energy flows where attention goes, so I pay no mind. Why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching so caught up in their egos? These people.